Well, morning, P. How was your week? Really good. You know, um, I mean, lately, with some of these earnings trades, um, you know, day's kind of over within about five, ten minutes for me. Uh, and then, you know, I'm still still managing some swings and things, but uh, but I don't really feel the need to go in full on a, a day trade. You get that, that kind of – you close out something big. I don't think you have to just jump right back in. So, um, so I'm, I'm in kind of a good rhythm as far as that goes. Um, sort of broader market thesis is panning out a bit. Um, had a hedge in SQQQ that went off. And, uh, and then I'm just waiting, you know, for, for some of them, but, uh, not, not ready to flip bearish or anything. I think a lot of what we saw is a possibility that we, we laid out there. And, and again, it felt like a disaster to thin twit people. That was the big, the big thing too. Uh, when you're just, you got people just slamming calls every day. Um, these conditions will eat them up. Yeah, I mean, I think we were a little bit ahead on, on that last week that the, the four or the 540 dip might feel like a nightmare. Um, yeah, kind of seeing that my week is, I mean, I, I call it average, I guess. Um, thank God we can trade crypto, uh, that, yeah. <laughs> let's just say that right now. Um, maybe, maybe more, uh, moving the stops us stops up in case we had pullback actually getting that. So a little thinner in positions than I have been probably since uh, about May right now. Um, feeling kind of manageable and liking it. And I do think, um, to be honest, I, I'll come out and say it like I was like, I'm going to maybe maybe sit on my hands here for a month, see how the market goes. And then you hit me with the sector we're going to cover on Wednesday. And yeah, I was yeah. like, it ain't time yeah. for me to leave yet. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> right, um, right. <laughs> but but as the, overall as the week goes, it was more of a, a getting set up, doing a lot of charting um, and an expected pullback. I mean, last week I was pretty adamant about these April candles right here. We're probably going to re-see again. Um, and, and then we talked about. You know, is it 540? Is it 520? It probably isn't 480. So we kind of went over that, you know, that week. So it's just good to kind of see it pan out um, in general, just as a market thesis. The odd thing to me is where um, and and how broad in sectors the pullback was. Like airlines is a shock to me right now. Uh, they all just got yeah. pummeled. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, not not a bad week to be honest, and I like I'd rather have an average week and know what the fuck is going on than have a great week and say how did that just happen. So that that's kind of where my head's at right now with it. Uh, yeah, and I you know the I guess the my whole my streak on Twitter of, of kind of calling out bad ideas and then seeing that I was right about it um, with coin people were everybody was all over this this call trigger at 260 or <laughs> or thereabouts and i you know my my thinking was like i just don't think you're going to get much out of it going long there and so it would pop to 264 or something like that but uh but really i mean inexperienced people they're going to wait for it to cross 260 and then they're going to buy yes um and they got destroyed and then it dipped all the way to you know, went under 240, which is a spot where I'm, I get interested in it. It dipped all the way to 226, which is my pivot on it, you know, below, below that. And, um, you know, and then, and then you're in great shape after that. You can actually make a trade and you can keep something. And that's how I prefer to trade coin. And then I'll hedge it a bit. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, just seeing that, seeing that play out again. And the thing about it is, you know, Bitcoin really stayed bullish the whole time i mean overall zoom out but um but those crypto stocks they just give you that range and i trade coin a lot but but you know a lot of the names are like that you, you wait for them to have a bad day or two bad days and that's when you can get back in um you don't chase them when they're up eight percent um you wait so uh, so how people are getting that and trading it the way we do yeah, I know. And I, to, to the people that hang out with us, I mean, I, I stress like find the ones that work best for you. Um, we have yeah. we have plenty of them, and they, they kind of rotate, so it's good to have a couple of them. Um, but it's it's not the sector you want to go chase. Whatever's up five or ten percent on the day, um, I'm I'm totally with you. It's it's the uncomfortable red day buys that they just come back in a week, uh, especially if you have any kind of level to them at all. Um, the charts yeah. are. The charts are really playable, and it's it's that range 
Um, I think that's what interests us. I mean, it, it, th this could be potatoes for, of all things. If they had the range, we'd be playing there. Um, so that it's given that tradable range. I mean, still, we're three years down the road. I, it really reminds me of like the dot-com um, era. Not that I traded in the dot-com era, but I know how to look at charts from the era and I've done it before. Right. Yeah. It just It just has that that range that just keeps coming and going. And, and we see it a little bit in other sectors, but I don't think anything is as consistently offered as, as the crypto. Um, so. uh, yeah, no, that, that's true. And, uh, and it's also one that can, um, I do tend to like things that, you know, are like spy QQQ. It doesn't matter for crypto, of course, but, it, but it also can do its own thing. It can just exist in its own, its own moves to its own catalyst. It's tied to its own commodity essentially. And um, so, so it's just kind of a smaller environment to read than the stock that you, you know, you just know QQQ, you know, drops half a percent intraday. It's going to disrupt what you're doing. And that's not really the case with, uh, with crypto. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, kind of move on a little bit here just to something more, uh, now than always because crypto is an always thing um it's basically the the freshman introduction to what we do yeah um where er's this week let's start there i mean it's it's, it's gonna be yeah. a big a, another big week uh, i've kind of seen it last week um uh, what i'm noticing is the the report doesn't matter not necessarily guidance that matters um but it, it really is the forward outlook it really, I mean, the, the, um, we're, we're, you have yeah, to get your shit, you have to have gotten your shit in order now and also have a good outlook. Because I've seen some great reports with unclarity looking forward and they pulled back. Um, it's uh, algo keywords. I mean, one way I would put it, the like um, Chipotle popped up 16% on the report. On the call, the guy said concerns about foot traffic. And it just gave it all up and then went red the next couple of days. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, completely just wrecked the option people. And, and so for, in their mind, it's the market makers messing with their 60 C weekly lottos. Um, but, but it is really, yeah, it is that those, you know, that, that those statements, the call, the, you know, the, that forward outlook, like you said, um, I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be a huge thing. And it's um, in some of the stuff that, um, you know, that we caught, you're just seeing some extraordinary moves and they're not even necessarily what I expected. Uh, I thought MMM was going to drop about 8%. It went up 22%. Did it matter that I was wrong? No, because we had a weekly call. Um, and, uh, and so I have a certain way, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a large move and a setup for a that's, large move that's and that's it. that's it and that's it that's it <laughs> and, and so and, and then and then you um you don't just buy a strike both directions out of the money the same amount i don't think that's not how i do that um the the expiration and you know that it, it all depends on what i'm what i'm seeing and uh i actually tend to go shorter expiration on the direction i don't expect uh because number one it can cover it could cover the other side better and get an explosive move instantly. instantly. Yeah. And, um, and I'm not necessarily confident that if it goes opposite of what I think, I'm not confident it's going to hold that because, because I know where the whales are. And if they have three months from now, you know, or two months from now and they're in their pull then their puts or their calls, like they can move that stock back there. Um, it can fade off a of move, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, so, so there's a chance to recover the other side. That's, that's sort of what, what I do there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you can't really go into it with just money, you know, way out of the money weeklies without any kind of plan, any kind of analysis. You can't just pick the big stuff and think that's where you should be. Um, you know, Tesla sold off hard. It ended up working out. You still needed to put up about $700 at least have a reasonable chance to make it out of that trade um and it, it ended up you got like if someone had a 220p which i think was like 250 dollars 
they they got lucky and, and they and it worked out um but uh it took the intraday move to get there and that's not really where you want to be with the with the weekly so so i think you i try to find the things that three hundred dollars or less gets us in the whole trade and we go from there and i just really encourage people not to not to size up and that kind of thing uh but uh back on topic of like the earnings this week a uh, lot of stuff i mean there's oil healthcare, big restaurants um of course you know apple amazon those big ones uh coin draft kings like so a lot a lot of our names are are here um i still think chips look a little shaky um we talked about this a couple weeks ago that you know they have this astronomical demand that they have to keep up with and it gets harder and harder uh, to do that if you're not nvidia which seems to be the only one that um that can and uh big solar earnings this week with first solar so so credit cards yeah i mean there's just uh there's a lot to, a lot to pick from and i'll just kind of do my best to to break it down for us as the days approach um as we go through these um <clears throat> shout out to the, everybody in the room real proud that we didn't hear tesla last week um there's better yeah. there's better yeah. fish there's better fish so if you're following someone that was on that trying to trade that last week it just wasn't the week for that um earnings it, earnings doesn't matter we're trading we're not investing here um and, and while i'm on that topic that that really um is the one thing that grinds my gears i don't know who i'm calling out but we can go look in the dd news section yeah. um but i'm a i'm a I mean, we know unk is a square investor we know this everyone knows yeah everyone knows this um but but we're trading in this room we're not investing we're we're trading and and to come in um around earnings and just have your mindset um oh they're reset structuring the company you know and thinking it's going to be some big downside and have that go into your thesis for your earnings straddle or lotto or whatever you're going to do is crazy to me that's the stuff you think about when it was 38 bucks you're looking yeah. for exactly what you just said you're looking for the range that's that stuff the company's doing not really important in your two option contracts that you're going to sell at the open it just it just really isn't so finding i guess better place to put your time and taking the investor mindset out of scalped day trades is really going to help you guys in the future because it just has no weight and you're wasting your time it's going to make you biased to a direction and yeah and you're not going to win short term with that now if you're talking to me at 38 40 and 50 when we bought square and you, and and you're worried about it pulling back there now then you worry about stuff like what they're about to say in this er and how you hedge or place your stop loss for this event but on a day trade yeah. you guys got to get off that little stuff that it, it's not really going to affect range you know, it, it, is that going to make it break a support or resistance or run 30%? I, I highly doubt it. Um, so that's that's more important. And again, with that one, a great stock to probably invest in. Um, you, you throw the number up occasionally at where it's going. But yeah, it, it, it probably ain't the best one for the day trade on, on the options ER. It's probably not the one you're going to want to be in. And, and this week it was Tesla and I think Squares, you know, there's always one or two of them. Probably find 10 of them next week in the er but there's going to be some um, some boring or or i guess not really top name that you just see irregularities in the flow and that's all that's well, really yeah, important and, is that professor sees irregularities in the flow that's it i don't care about it was um, anything else <laughs> yeah it was it was a uh, it's kind of funny with um so on thursday so i i missed one that dropped like 40 percent um because there wasn't flow clarity on it. So I didn't mess with it. It was like, it's some diabetes testing company or something. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't feel like I missed anything. Cause I, I did try to read it. I didn't see anything. Um, but what's funny is like, so that happened. Everyone's looking at that, uh, course era on the other hand, <laughs> um, where it just, it was at the perfect underlying price. Cause it has those two fifty strikes and it was right at seven fifty. And so I'm like, well, and they're for August. I'm like, this is going to move pretty huge. You just get one of each, both directions, and you're not going to get killed. You might only make 20 bucks. You might lose 20 bucks. You're you're paying 140 for the whole trade. You know, uh, lines up perfect. It popped 50 percent, 
And I mean, you look at the chart, you know, and then it, when it started to move, I was like, uh, what's our, I knew, I knew it was underwater. Um, and so I'm just kind of like, well, what's our, what's the number above you gave me one. It hit it within the first 15 minutes of, of open and, you know, the contracts were over $300 at that point. So, um, so yeah, that's, um, that's what, that's what we're after. Um, UPS was a little different. It was, uh, there was kind of a, I mean, the macro did sort of matter there with what I was seeing in freight. And then, uh, for me, it's never just about the, the macro thing. It's, uh, if the flow matches that story, um, then that looks, you know, that looks pretty good. And so, you know, for that to drop over 10%, that's a huge move for, you know, for UPS. And, uh, so, you know, so each one of these ones I pick, it has a different research strategy and a different thing I'm looking for and, and all that. But, you know, I just try to just put out the best ones that I can. And you'll just notice they're not a lot of the ones that people around Twitter are, are trading. They're going to be trying to trade Microsoft. Microsoft on a good earnings is going to give you 4%, something like that. Um, you're still risking a lot. And it, it holding that move to the next day is tricky. So that's just not really where you want to be, but, uh, but that's what people gravitate towards those big, those big names. That's where they want to be. They want to hit a home run on that. It's hard to hit a home run on ones like that. You can hit a single, but you're going to, tr that trades about a thousand dollars. So, you know, I don't really recommend that. Honestly. If, if I was worried about being a celebrity or a fucking Twitter person, I would have wrote all this shit, all our sayings down, but you're not going to yeah. get the GME tattoo. You're going to have to settle for the Macy's tattoo. Same thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. It just is. Yeah. It, it just is. Um, eleven seventeen. Don't search the group. <laughs> um, my levels are real. It's real simple. I mean, I'm not some mad scientist. I just have a system that I trust and it works. Um, when Professor pulled this chart up, this this course chart up, um, just big gap here back here. Eleven seventeen. You can see it right here. If you look right here, eleven seventeen. Just the bottom of the channel. We're looking for a gap fill. We hit that Monday morning. Um, 11.50 needed a hold or it probably wasn't going to stay above that level. But just, I said it like a week ago, P, um, and it was like a quick question to you. Uh, but it's it's something people really should have thought about, and it applies here again. Would you rather know the bottom or would you rather know the top? And we all agree we'd rather know the bottom. That way we can never be bad. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I don't want to know the top <laughs> or I'm not looking for the top. Um, so identifying good levels and the perfect, perfect rotation into it. Uh, Matt could not be more happy. And I know he's listening right now, so I'm glad he's listening right now. Probably because he's listening right now is a reason. But I couldn't be more happy that secondary has seven or 178.48 as his line on Bank of America. Because it's his line. Mine's 178.59. Yeah. He's 11 on, uh, cents. Boeing? Yeah, on BA. Boeing. He's, yeah. he's 11 yeah. cents cheaper than me. But that motherfucker yeah. trusts his level because it's his level. It's not Unk's level. Yeah, he just no. didn't copy paste. He he put his own level, learned how to trade it, likes the stock, likes how it moves, it fits his goddamn trading style. Do you think I'm trading shares 178 to 185? You're crazy. But it works for this guy. And shout out to him for getting his own level. Reminds me of like the same transition that Goose took through the years. Like, you know, I'm gonna make this shit yeah. my own. Um, and it's close. So Trust. Well, and I'll say too, from from my end, um, he looks at the IV on the options. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a huge key, and you know because um, you want to move from low IV to high IV, not the other way around. So people buy the exciting stuff when it's moving, and especially around open, you know those premiums are all juiced. Uh, premiums are are quiet; they're they're you know depressed a little in in Boeing. Um, People expect the worst out of Boeing, so you're not going to get re retail piling in. So, so the moves are kind of authentic to the flow, and yeah. so uh, when, when you're around a good level like that, it um, it works. Um, one more thing on on course era because it matches what we were saying about forward guidance, um, sure, sure, or just forward. You know, the, the, they figured the AI thing out. They figured out you know how to approach it as an education software company, which is something that none of the other ones. Um, have done so we we had puts on uh scholastic the book fair people um you know that stock got obliterated uh, we've seen what che chegg has it's kind of meandered uh, but i think chegg will get it right too uh eventually but um 
but yeah, I think the, you know, a, a company figuring out their relationship to something that's been pummeling their stock um, is something that's going to continue to kind of manifest itself in small caps and it's going to be different in each sector and everything. But, um, but, you know, that's the kind of news or the kind of report yeah. um, that's going to move those stocks 50% plus. And, um, and so that's why our next, what we're going to be talking about next week, uh, that's a big theme and thesis as far as, uh, as far as that goes. No, a hundred percent. Um, and I, I think, I think we're, um, barking up the right tree because I, in general, I look for bottoms. So I notice what's oversold. I mean, let's yeah. just, let's get, you, you don't see me talking about a lot of all time high charts and, um, it's just not the way it is. I noticed that last week, a good time to talk about that P, um, when I, I, I don't really get a shitty report card too often. I'm not like p- pumping what I do or anything. Um, but when I do get a crappy report card, um, it, that's not, that's not good outlook for the week looking forward. Usually. And, um, <laughs> and we saw that. <laughs> yeah. I think last week, I think there were maybe four X's or something on yours. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So I, I, and I, you know, what's funny is I, I, I grade them individually and I'm not even thinking about that. Oh, but that ends up being, that ends up being kind of what happens. It's sort of like when, when I write a note and I say almost nothing, I'm not really intentionally doing that. It's just, uh, the read is very simple. And so I just write that. And then that ends up, and then the trade ends up being simple. Um, and so, um, so yeah, I think that's just a kind of organic part of our, part of our process. Um, and, uh, you read stuff individually, you take a step back, you look at it as a whole. So, uh, report card that was a good example of that for sure yeah i mean it's just <clears throat> i think a big reason for it is i look for that downside like i look for stuff like i said oversold or on support which the direction i mean it, it has to be up that's how I, that's the only way it's gonna work for me right like i don't have yeah, that yeah. the downside direction so when i don't get any flow or any upside positioning it it, it should be an indicator because I, I mean, i'm decent at what i do um, but it was just very telling to me cause I was like, I had a bad week or had a bad report card and we had a bad week. I need this, like, I need to keep track of this. Um, because normally yeah. I complain that you're not, um, what do you want to call it? You're not strict enough or, or whatever on my grades. I'm like, grade me a little harder P cause it's you telling me everything's great. Um, yeah. Um, and it was. For months. <laughs> for, <laughs> well, you did say, um, you did say Unk's market. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just using that as an indicator. And, and again, maybe that, that works for me and you because we're in the system, we're doing the work, something I noticed, but anyone that, that is out there with their own system, kind of taking your own notes, I do the same thing and review them and be like, all right, I should have caught this or next time this happens, you know, maybe be on the lookout for this because it, it, it didn't come to me until like Thursday. I'm like, you know what? I wonder if there's a correlation here between my shitty report card and this shitty week. <laughs> well, you know, um, one one thing uh, I I've learned kind of for myself is I I was looking at starting to look at Tesla again um, after that after it fell, and we know the levels and everything. But what happened the last time um, was around around two twenty. I started trying to trade it every day. Yeah, don't and it was that. working all right, um, but. You know, you're just uh, you, get, you don't have much margin for error because 220 is not really that strong of a level. It's kind of option driven, and um, you can't really load up there. And it it works better as a short entry after it fails. That that's happened three times now. So um, so that's just experience, and um, and just you know, I think it it might seem kind of counterintuitive to people for to say, well, you know, I think. You know, SPY, the SPY 540 area looks pretty good. We're seeing buyers step in and think, you know, things are looking all right. And at the same time to say, oh, we're going to see UNC's level on Tesla again. And I think you, someone could look at that and say, well, if SPY is going to do all right, how is Tesla going to drop another, <laughs> you know, $30 or whatever? Uh, well, you know, go look at history, call up the chart, call up SPY, what it was doing and Tesla pulling back. Um, and it's just, I think EV in particular, why I'm not jumping right into Ford. Yeah, um, yeah, even eleven the, the, fifty, the, even eleven. The, the yeah. bad news lingers, you know, and, and you just you got you got time, you got time for the stock to figure it out. Not, it's not certain that Tesla's going to fall back to to your level, but it's not going to go to two eighty right from here. You know, just 
instantly either. So, uh, so let, let it figure itself out. You don't have to, you don't have to jump right in. Oh, Tesla's going to my level. I'll, yeah, okay, I'll, no, I'll yeah. say that right now. I'll I'll put <laughs> I'll put that on. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That, I mean, unless well, you gotta remember, that, that means it's got to go right through mine, which is by, by yours. So well, okay, you, know, you can our... you can argue you, you can you can buy Tesla when we're arguing about that seven bucks or whatever it is. There we there we go. Yeah, you're allowed to buy Tesla then. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Just the I think the better. Um, or what do you want to call it? The better bellwether or the better leading indicator in that regard is NVIDIA. I mean, I, I said it when yeah. the split happened that we we're going to get 100, and I still think we're going to get 100 there. Uh, yeah, and, I, and um, I, I put it on my list we this week because Flo kind of woke up. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, the main thing is it's just a lot like a volume spike in nvidia which already is huge anyway but um i use avgo as my barometer the way those two are lining up uh nvidia looks like it's going to have an active week but that means it could it could pop up seven dollars and then it could drop twenty dollars in a week and a half too so um so i'm still yeah i'm still all about the the 100 tests that thousand free split um it's just too uh it's too big a, a number to not be tested. Uh, I just think it's going to happen. Yeah, and then he just ran. We ran too fast there. We really did. Yeah, I mean, yeah. these guys are just happens. Well, there. and this is where I get into it with these so the the Elliott Wave people. These are like the arguments I, I always have with him. This guy tried to tell me that he called AVGO making this this big run or whatever, uh, but he called that when it was. I don't know, 14 or something like that, 1400. It fell to 1200 from where he said it was going to go to 2000. And then it still never made it to 2000. And so I'm like, when do you exit and enter with these waves? You just keep redrawing them <laughs> after the fact. What is the, you know, there's just, there's too much, too many diagonals and, you know, just these uh, wave two, wave four or whatever. What's the price? I'm like, I'm going to buy an AVGO at 1200 to 1220 That's where you buy it. And I'm like, I'm going to start selling it over, you know, 1350 That was the trade. And that, that trade worked. You know, keep some. It took off. I, you know, I kept some shares through the split or whatever. But uh, I just, you know, it's keep it simple. Horizontal line. When the fuck are you buying it? Yeah. I don't buy a diagonal price. Like, it, you know, it has to hit a, hit a line in the sand. And I'm going to buy here or underneath it, and I'm going to sell here or above it. That's how you trade, to me. Um, sure, sure. The only the and, only the only diagonals I use are the EMAs, and that's that's clearly through time you notice that the algos buy off of them, and it's not just yeah, the same yeah. one. It's not the fifty on the day or the two hundred on the weekly. Each stock is different, but if you take a note on where they respond, and then you look at a historical chart. Um, you'll figure out where the algo set on the thing. <laughs> you'll figure it out. And it's, it's, Absolutely, usually, yeah. it's, it, other than that, I mean, I don't see the reason for any horizontal line outside the, the 50 and the 200 on the larger time frames. I mean, if you're going to call and, them support or resistance, like if you're going to look for a directional change or you're going to look for support, um, or resistance in any way, those are the only two that really matter. A uh, short term is just more of, uh, like on your your day charts and stuff, that's just more to keep the trend going, right? Like it's it's basically yeah. your um, your average. You're trying to keep your average up on your gain, and as soon as that levels off, you can use it for an exit. I, I mean, well, I, I, I do I, that, but I joke about um, on, like as far as horizontal lines go, I, I joke all the time. I, I use the term scam algo, and what I'm actually talking about intraday is um, when you can see the buying's very mechanical, sure. and that, like the slope of the slope yeah. of the line is not there's not much variation there and so that's one where like you don't try to buy the dip or call the top when you see that formation um it's just it allows you to keep something you're in so you see it break like this and, and that's even like yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you think that's but, uh, this but, yeah. is not retail this is not retail <laughs> yeah but the um but yeah the you know the the Sorry. shapes in the clouds reading of charts um you know all that stuff it's storytelling and i think that was a good a good term you used um 
And so these guys do it after the fact. The other thing that, that a lot of Twitter people do, and I talk about this now because this is our public video, um, is they'll they'll talk about some contract that made some crazy gain. They were like this, that DX CM, or I don't even remember the ticker, but the one that you know dropped like 40%. And they're like, you know, if you bought 70p for one dollar, it's yeah. worth a thousand dollars today. <laughs> and I'm like, so when you would have bought that, the stock was 107 dollars. So who's buying that exactly? Exactly. Um, you know the you know if uh, if you did a straddle on it, you hit large, uh, but you were held a lot closer to the money than than 70 bucks. So they'll they'll not only say that they'll say if you bought if you bought a hundred of this one dollar contract you're cashing out $100,000 this morning. And sure, yeah. that to me is just, yeah, because they don't have any real trades to talk about. So they just talk about these fantasy scenarios. Uh, whereas we were actually in the one that went up 50% or MMM that had its best day since 1987 or some, some crazy. Um, and we actually had a setup. We have a timestamp. We have a repeatable process. And, um, and we, you know, we, we go from there. The ER Casino page has been up long enough. I don't think it's just a lucky streak. I think we're actually building something that uh, that is repeatable. We're not going to win on all of them, but that's not what it's about anyway. Um, you can you can win on half of them, and your account's going to grow. And so I, I think the the people doing kind of like an isolated section of their account, or you know, even a an account just for this, and they're doing the same thing every week. I think that's the way to that's the way to approach it. And um, what we'll keep doing going forward. No, I, I don't want to rant on it too much, but pretty pretty adamant about we, we, we set out to be different than Twitter. I mean, we just basically yeah. look for the same customer base, I guess, as our people, the same people with the same interest. I don't know how you want to put that, but they, they want you to follow, click buttons. Some people want that. And I mean, that's just not what, not what we do here. We're trying to make you independent. Um, and I think the little things we do on the side really show that, you know, what we're about. I mean, we don't sit here and do the 50% promo or, or threaten that the price is going up because we're offering something new. We're just trying to trade in a good community, people with similar minds, get more eyes on the stock. That's That was my goal in the first, my, the first like day one. And, and to be honest with you, you've exceeded what I thought a group could do. We're just having more eyes on stocks. Right, just have more people looking at stuff with the same idea of what we're doing. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, you're not going to be able I mean, even with the best. I mean, ER is great, I love it, but it's not just blindly follow. You still got to find the setup that works for you, works for your style. You still got to be focused 80% of your time on building that style until you figure out um, what you're doing. Um, shout out to Carlos in that regard. That guy, Jesus, I mean, I told him. Yeah, I told him probably January, February, like, I, I know it doesn't look clear now, but just come to work every day and, and, and it, you'll see clarity. You know, you'll, you'll be able to get on the bus in the long run. And we just had a shitty week. And I think he probably had one of the best weeks he's ever had. So um, it, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, at this point in time, there's, you know, 10, 15, 20 people that, you know, we've we've straightened out from. <laughs> throwing money away to becoming profitable. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, he, uh, go ahead, go ahead. He gave his profile picture the, you know, the, the broccoli haircut. He could probably, he could probably move on to a new haircut pretty soon. I think <laughs> he's, he's making progress. He gets a new haircut. <laughs> he gets, <Yeah. laughs> he gets that. He gets the, um, I don't know what it is, P, but it's like the bull cut from our fade with the comb over. You know, like the, you the, yeah. the Zach Morris thing or whatever that is yeah. going on. Yeah. He, he gets that one. With I don't know if he gets the little the bang pop in the front yet. I don't know if he gets that, <laughs> right. but he gets the good comb over <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus. <clears throat> uh, let's get into spy, sir. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the big the big question I asked, you know, the the past couple of weeks, I was, you know, I said that this. Um, you know, 540p into the fall, you know, was kind of, was kind of waking up, and then, you know, the the co the contract that should con I guess concern people if you're a bull that is starting to dominate things is December 500p, and I said I don't think that that means we're going to 500, but I think it means 520s on the table. So then now I'm looking like 
is is 520 for like September or November gonna or October, you know, whatever the fall is that going to actually start to pair with that? And you get that one, two punch. Um, and I don't, I don't see that yet. So I think there's a, a decent chance we get some, some relief this week. Big earnings obviously is the, um, is the, is the catalyst. So I don't see some massive down week, uh, personally. And I think now that we've pulled back upside might be a little easier to, um, to get a handle on as well. So I don't know before I give my numbers, I don't know how that aligns with your kind of broader outlook. Oh, did you lose me? Oh, my bad. I had, I was, I had a cough. I muted. Um, I had, um, oh, yeah. definitely about Wednesday. I had the, I already had on my notes, like look for what's holding, going against trend and what's on support. So um, the thesis is exactly the same. I'm if, if I'm a shot caller on some spy, if this 540 doesn't hold, I think we can test 500. There's just not much in the way. Um, yeah. Um, but also with you, we could we could um, kind of stay range bound here for another week or two. And with the earnings kind of propping us up, um, you nailed the I mean, not to backtrack too much, but you pretty much nailed the numbers. Um, last week, a couple bucks off to the downside and had the top. Um, uh, historically, there's not much here. So it's, it's, it, we're still in that environment that's hard. We do have like a local range. Um, but again, this 545 or 540, whichever one you want to call it, is, is going to be the pivot here locally. Um, I'm with you. Kind of check back up this week. That's, that's where I would be at. Um, I don't think we get as big as a, a candle, though. Yeah. So we're, no, we're, we're under yeah. 556 or 550, but we definitely finish higher on the week. So I, um, yeah. And so in terms, in terms of my, my numbers, um, I've got, I think we maybe wick under 540 for a minute, but, but I got, so I got 538.09 to the downside. And I'm going to say, yeah, five, five fifty thirty eight. 38. So a little, a little bit of tighter range this week. I like that. I like that. Um, top side a little easier for me than downside, just because we have some, some area to go off of finally. Um, mm -hmm. I really like this. 552 but there is a little bit above it so i'm gonna go 54401 just barely touch up there and i'm with you on the um probably get the wick under 540 um, so 53902 i got a 01 and 02 so yeah tight way tighter range that's like five five dollar range on spy this week it's not huge uh yeah, and it's just um, you just have some pretty big earnings that you know can can do some things, but you know, but it could be it could be mixed. I mean, Apple could be good and Amazon could be bad. You know, there's there's just a lot that can can happen that that keeps spy in kind of a tighter range than you think, and then you always have the you know pre market high, pre market low thing. Um, I uh, this isn't a situation where I, I want to trade spy very much we do have people who um, who do that but I think that sort of defines the the arena for where these earnings are, are going to play out um, start some recovery hold you know just holding levels that kind of thing yeah I don't RTL much on spy or ETFs um, but what I'd have noticed with them um, um, when you use pre-market high pre-market low it, it, they really respond when there's extremes in volume. So when there's super low volume, they're respected. And when there's super high volume, it's respected. Um, yeah. The, the, the low volume kind of keeps you inside of the box. So you, it kind of helps you with taking profit or where to re-add because you're going to stay inside the box all day. The high volume kind of shows you the levels that um, consolidate before the bigger move or yeah, the bigger move in either direction. So they usually catch um, the volume stays in, 
set like if, if they're if you hit pre-market low and volume stays in it's usually because the sellers are trying to push it through that level so yeah um works totally. way, way better on on share side <laughs> on, on stocks yeah. uh, on smalls on share side for me though uh, usually the those are the levels in the sand um if you get news around those so um yeah so just uh I said five, I meant 15. Just a, a inside bar week, though, on SPY. Um, let's do that again, though, Pete. Are we going to finish above 545 this week? Yes, I think we do. Uh, mainly because Apple earnings late in the week. Yeah, I expect that to be pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I think that I think that those those will carry it and uh, should have a good Friday. Um Big sell-offs on a Friday have been, and it's um, not a lot of fear going into the weekends lately. So I think it does finish strong. Perfect, perfect. All right, you ready to get to work, sir? Uh, yeah. Perfect. I will uh, grab a coffee and, and we'll go. Perfect. Like and subscribe for more.